Welcome to Real Estate Success Partner. We're your hosts, Devin Abuke. David Wynn. And we're here to talk about how to have great success in any market. Today, that market is Arkansas. Talk about great success. Dave, brother, who do you have here today? I guess they're kind of a power broker out there in Arkansas. I, well, I don't guess. I know. We got Arlen and Pam Welch. Uh, great team. Great I power I thought it was couple. Parlin. Uh, well, we'll let him explain <laughs> that. <laughs> Hey, Arlen. Hey, Pam. Welcome to the show. Hello. Great to have you guys here today. I uh, appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. We know you guys are super busy up there, uh, not just doing business yourself, but you run an entire production and you just switched offices. So I don't know how you find time to do all this stuff, but uh, hey, thanks for joining us today. We're really excited to have you here. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about you guys. Um, First off, are you both from Arkansas? Yes. Yes. And both from the same city? No. No. Where'd you guys grow up? No. I'm I'm originally from Jonesboro. Okay. I'm a I grew up on the Cash River. Uh, every day lived lived on the Cash River, so I'm I, we grew up probably forty miles apart. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, so you didn't go to school together. No. Uh, so how'd you guys meet? How, how'd you, how'd the powerhouse couple come together? I was a postmaster and, uh, he came in to mail some mail out one day and I was a farmer. He was, I farmed my whole life. So I come into, you know, farmers carry all their bills on the, on the dash of their truck. And they, if yes, they sir. find five minutes, they come in and pay. So I had five extra minutes and I came in and and needed help, so I rung the dinger on the <laughs> on the desk, and Pam pops out. I come around the corner. <laughs> the dream come so. true. <laughs> I, I, love, I didn't know that. That's I love such this. a great story. A farmer and a postmaster now top tier realtors. We I need to know more stories. <laughs> well, she mentioned he was a farmer in the pre podcast. I remember that, but that's because I'm from Kansas originally, and my entire ancestry were farmers. Yeah. So I I broke out yeah. of the uh, the farming game. Uh, that it sold off a lot of the land by that point in time. But uh, so I know what you're talking about. The bills on the dashboard. Uh, <laughs> uh, we grew up uh, in a lot of pickup trucks with a lot of John Deere, right? Lot, lots of John Deere. We love that green. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You know, what's funny, Arlen. I'm from uh, Salina, Kansas, and uh, I live in uh, Salina, Texas now. And yes, that was by design. The subdivision I moved into is called Light Farms. And it's surrounded by tractors and fields. And when I saw it, I said, I'm at home. This is where I need to be. And uh, I've, I've owned two houses out there now. And it absolutely, you know, feels like I'm, I'm back to my roots. Isn't Solana the home of Archer Daniels Midland? I, I'd be lying if I answered that question. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've, sold, we've sold crops to them for years, and I think that's where they're from. They're You're probably base. right. You're probably right. You know, I grew up, uh, you know, the, the farming was done when I was in my threes and fours, right? So uh, I don't remember it as well. Now, if I had, you know, my grandfather, great grandfather, unfortunately, they've passed here, brother, they would probably know exactly who you're talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, that's pretty. That's such a small world uh, that you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's uh, let's dive in. So we got a postmaster and we've got a farmer, and you guys decide, hey, we're a match made in heaven, and you guys jump right out of postmastering and farming and said we're going to do real estate together. <laughs> well, there was a little more to it than that, but <laughs> so, so Pam. Pam, she'd get up and go to, after we, we get married, she gets up and goes to the post office every day and I go to the farm and, and then she comes home and I'm still on the farm and she's like constantly trying to find people that you can count on to work on the farm. And Pam's like, well, I ride around with you every afternoon. I think I can do this. Yeah. And I'm like, you want to come and work on the farm? And she's like, yeah. And I said, well, if, I said, let's, let's try this a, a day or two. And, it, and she did. She said, oh, I love it. That's awesome. And I was like, all right, but you come on the farm. You don't get to ride with me every day. You actually got to work. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so she did. We, we laughed now. So Pam got to water all the soybeans with the polypop, and, and we laughed now. And she'd be back 
five miles from the nearest road on some field, mosquitoes eating her up and everything. And, and when I would get there, she was like, how do you do this every day? And I said, just remember someday all this work you do on the farm are paid off. You'll know all this when someone's talking to you and look, 18 years down the road, she knows everything there is about farming when she talks to somebody. That's pretty awesome. That's awesome. So it paid off. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great So story. I quit being a postmaster, quit quit a a really good job yeah. and started driving tractor every day on the farm in 2007 until 2015. So that's what we done and then in 15 we we pretty much quit farming and moved up to Cave City and that's when I got my real estate license and I told him I needed help. Yeah. And uh, well, he said, no, I'm going to let you. That's, story. that's yeah. a, We need to hear the whole, whole cause you told us the story in the pre podcast. Yep. How'd that work out? So, yeah. All right. So yeah, let's go. I want to hear it. Uh, all right. So, so in, in 2000, I guess it was 2013, we were farming and we were just trying to make ends meet and farming. And I wanted something to do in the, in the off time. So I was building furniture in the, in the shop during off time, I'd go to the flea market and sell it. And he would thought I was crazy because <laughs> he's, he's a farmer and he couldn't get the tractors in the shop during the winter to work on them yeah. when he needed to, because I had, I had wood in the shop because I was working, <laughs> you know, I was making money during the, so anyway, we, he said, well, I'll tell you what he said in 2013, he said, if you'll, he made me go trap like, trap beavers and <laughs> and and coons we're also and, professional trappers. yes he made me go do that in 2013 that winter yeah he made me go do that full time with him and then he said i'll do whatever you want to do in in after that and i said okay so in 2013 that's what we done so we went and trapped and when we got done with that he said what do you want to do and i said i want to open some kind of flea market that's like sells furniture and things that people need he said, are you crazy? I said, no. Nope. So we came to Cave City and um, we opened up. Well, we owned a ranch in Cave City. We owned 450 acres up here, mm. but okay. but I didn't think Cave City was a place that I wanted to open up a flea market because there wasn't, I mean, there's like 2,000 people total. Yeah. I mean, there's not very many people here. It was all, I mean, you, you blink it when you drop through and you've missed it. I know those So things. I thought, man, this is not the place, but we opened it. Uh, we, we rented it from a gentleman, uh, Tommy Masoner, and he was reluctant to rent it to us because he didn't want a flea market in. He had 6,000 square foot um, <laughs> building, and he's like, oh, I don't know about a flea market. So I talked him into renting it, and we rented it, and then he said, you've still got to help me put crop in. He said, we've still got to, we've still got to row crop a couple more years before we can completely quit. So... I said, well, you've got to get a tractor with a GPS on it so I can go ahead and get my boost filled in my flea market. And he said, what? I said, I've got to be able to plant. He said, you've got to be able to plant. So he got a tractor. Uh, our partner, Scott Foshee, which is now an agent with us, him and his wife both, Scott and Janet Foshee. Um, Scott, Scott got us a GPS on our tractor so that I could turn it on, I could get on my computer and on my phone and I could start filling my boost in my flea market while it drove down to the end. And all I had to do was turn it. So I filled 62 booths Talk about in a month. 62 <laughs> booths in a month. We opened this in May of 2013. And um, we did that in 2013, 14, and then 15. We quit farming when I got my real estate license. All right, so and I'm going to have first... to tell that story in a minute, but I want to just back this up real quick, guys. So we got farming, postmaster, trapping, furniture and making. Professional. <laughs> we were professional duck guides yeah. for, for almost 20 years. So And raised deer. We actually had deer high fence facility for deer. This is and reality fish. TV, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had... I I promise you, his, our drone guy that does all of our IT, our drone, he does our drone and our professional photos. 
He's he wants to put a, a GoPro on him and, and go with him every day because, because we have a we have a logging crew. Also, we have a dozer crew, excavator <laughs> crews, mulching crews. So I run the hydro axe on our logging crew. Have you ever seen a hydro axe run? I have not, sir. Well, y'all come on out. Come on up. I'll, I'll let we'll you drive it. it. He'll probably put us to work, Dave. I'll that would be a good And I know how good. farmers yeah. work. <laughs> now, so, now we know, every time I talk to Pam, she says Arlen's behind the scenes because he has 20 something businesses out there. How's he supposed to work in real estate with all the other stuff? Well, here's the thing when you sell somebody a piece of ground, you develop their duck hunting. You develop their yeah. deer hunting. You develop roads to their property. That's you, right. you you show them everything about it. So we have everything it takes from scratch to finish to do it. That's wild. Yeah. So you guys are literally the you're the plug. Yeah. You're, you're the resource that everybody yeah. needs once they buy that perfect piece of land and put that beautiful house on it. Now you're out there getting it ready so they can do all the things they love to do. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And and we have people tell us that. When they come to this part of the world, they're like, Pam, you're what sets the market. You are the market. Yeah. No, you have your own market. 100%. You've yeah. built it. No, no so, wonder you are so successful. So, let, so let's take it back to the story. Okay. So we, we just finished just unloading a ton of furniture. And now you decide <laughs> that you want your real estate license. And where do we go from there? Because I remember this story. So, I can't wait well, to... so... No, she's, she's missing one point. You know, how this, <laughs> so how this gets started is everybody comes in her flea market and they're like, hey, I got a cow I need to sell or a horse or an acre of ground, you know, and they're like, Pam, you know anyone that might want to buy that? That's how it gets started. Well, and so, <laughs> so the a lady came in and wanted us to buy three acres. And okay. so... We bought it, you know, I bought it. I didn't know anything more than just buying it that day. And uh, all I got was a deed on it. Yeah. Didn't think anything about it. She only wanted $4,000. I gave her $4,000 for it. She gave me a deed, didn't think anything about it. Um, six months later, when we really didn't need it, and I thought, what am I gonna do with it? Got to researching it, and then I was like, oh man, I didn't even have a clear title on it. Yeah. Didn't even think uh, I didn't get title insurance. insurance. It was tax auction. So anyway, uh, long story short, I got to digging into it. And then I was like, you know what? I think I want to get into real estate. And then, um, of course you did. <laughs> of course I did. So there was a gentleman we'd, we'd been buying and selling throughout, but I'd never just bought anything by myself. Yeah. He buys, you know, he'd buy and sell. But, um, so I come home and I said, I think I want to get into real estate. And he was like, I think you'd be good at it. Yeah. So I started taking my class. You guys are great. And I did it <laughs> while I was running the flea market. So I would be waiting on client, our customers. I'd be studying my test because I did mine online. And then uh, I'd come home at night and I would I would just go through it and I'd work on it. And he would be 11, 11 30, And he'd be like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, I'm trying to, to get through this. Went and took my test, passed both of them on the first time I took it. I would come home. I was so excited. So after I passed it, we took off on our anniversary and we went to Hot Springs. Yep. We can't stay gone very long because I'm excited because I'm like, oh man, I cannot well, wait for job, my license. So. <laughs> yeah. I, went, oh, I can't 32. wait for my license to come in. So we went to Hot Springs and on our way, he said, well, we got up the next morning. We were on our way back and we come back and we come back through Gone, which is uh, over there by the White River. Yep. And uh, I passed by, I'm driving because I drive everywhere. And so I passed by this sign that says for sale by owner. And he says, oh, hey, baby, you better turn around. He said, I've seen that for sale by owner. And uh, I said, oh, I said, okay. So I went down there and turned around and I got the number and he said, you need to call them. And I said, so I called them, but they didn't answer. He said, you, you need to text them. I was like, okay. So I text him, <laughs> finally get a hold of him, and we drive onto the house up here. And this is, I don't even remember what time it was. It was later in the evening. And um, we get home, and I had talked to the gentleman, and he said, hey, he said, you know, we're at a birthday party over here in Poughkeepsie, Arkansas, which is just right over here by us. He said, this is actually something my aunt's going to have to make a decision on. He said, but um, I'm going to give her this information. I'll get back with you. He said, maybe a couple of days. He said, but I'll let you know. I said, well, okay. 
So I hang up, and of course, Arlen says, do not let this go. He said, tell, call them back and tell them that you possibly have somebody interested and that, you know, if not, you want to list it. And I was like, I'm not calling them back. And he was like, I'm <laughs> telling you. He just kept on me and on me. He's laughing about it, but he was just persistent. He said, I'm telling you, if you don't get this listed, somebody else will. He said, this would be your first listing because I had gotten a phone call on my way back from Hot Springs telling me, hey, your license just hit the office. And I was like, so I'm legal. And he said, you're legal. So I was, it was on at that time. So I knew I I was legal. So um, I called him back and I said, hey, I know y'all probably aren't ready, but I said, you know, I would love to list this, you know, if you guys decide to list it. So he immediately called me about 830 that night and said, well, you know, another realtor over in this area was going to come look at it. Monday. Monday. He said, but, and this was on a Saturday afternoon. He said, so, and I said, well, I can come look at it in the morning. And he said, really? And I said, yeah, I'll be there at seven o'clock. You delayed. And he said, yeah. He said, uh, okay. He said, well, give me just a minute. So what we do? Seven o'clock the next morning, we were over there and we listed it and we sold it and when we got back, that's when I told I him. He just rode with me. He his, just rode with yeah. me, but I told him, I said, you have got to get your license because I need help. <laughs> because it was a piece of wooded ground. Yeah. <laughs> bear, so, bear, full of bears every yeah, day. Yeah, I come back, though, and I, I come right back to the office, and I said, you have got to get your license. And he was like, <laughs> so he went in next door. We had we owned some commercial offices, and he went in there and sat down and got his license, and we have never quit. We quit. We we did quit farming. Yeah. He farmed one more year. He customed for for our partner, which was Scott and Janet Foshi, which are agents with us now. Yep. They still they still farm. Uh, they uh, they run points at rice and grain. So That's what my um, family did. Yeah, they outsourced all the farming. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. so we he just because we're friends, he finished the farming with them, and he's net. We never looked back, and now our kids, Braden and Robin, both. Uh, our son and daughter-in-law both are working in here with us. And yep. of course, I, I, I don't know, but I, I'd like to tell you the story how we got with Mossy Oak. The, that it's pretty interesting that that Pam has accomplished what she's done with Mossy Oak. Of course, Mossy Oak is mainly raw land or you know any kind of land, and. So Pam's all about selling these houses. I love selling all your houses sell- for y'all. They're all about <laughs> selling these houses. So so a boy by the name of Will Harden, he was with Mossy Oak, and he, he would come up on our land, and he would hunt all the time. And uh, so when he found out that we had our license, he's like, he he, he, knew, he said, he, he's talking to Pam, and she told him she's getting her license, and he looked at me, and 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 she said, well, Arlen's got his license. And he looked at me and he said, come here, I want to talk to you. He didn't want to talk to Pam. He wanted to talk to me because he's a land guy. And so he's like, come man, he's like, he's like, you know, all this stuff about this land. I, we need you at Mossy Oak. We need you at Mossy Oak. And I'm like, I said, well, Pam's got to come. I said, if I come with Mossy Oak, Pam's got to come. Yeah. And he's like, man, she sells houses. We don't sell no houses. And I'm like, well, I can't do that. She wants to sell houses. This is her thing. I said, I just got my license. This is her thing. So if if, if y'all think about it, if y'all want to let her sell houses, call us back. Yeah. A couple of days, Will calls back. He's like, man, we have got to have you come on board with us. We need you. You're a land. You're all, He said, you're a land person that yeah. got your real estate license. So yeah. all they were about me getting my, me coming. Yeah. So then we get Pam comes instantly they just she just floors them with i mean it's just i mean it's just like she just takes off listing these houses selling these five hundred thousand dollar houses million dollar houses and everything and and, and these fifty thousand fifty thousand dollar houses <laughs> he forgets and 10, that. but the yeah. thing is yeah. the thing is uh will now then thank goodness mossy oak had had the foresight to see what the future was because now Mossy Oaks a driving force in the housing market. Yes, we and Mossy Oak has came Pam. around and, and it's wonderful because they asked me, just like for you guys, yeah. I've got Mossy Oak agents asking, Who is your lenders? Yeah. Who are your lenders you're working with? So 
that's a good thing because that's right. now I've got all these agents asking me, who are your lenders you're working yeah. with? So this would be great for, for our Mossy Oak agents out there because Absolutely. they're land people. They don't, they don't really know. So, um, so yes, this is great. Well, that's what Bam we, has we a, talked to you guys about that one-time close program because yeah. we know, you know, for land folks, a lot of times they're just looking at the land, but the clients want to put a house on there. And, you know, this is a great way for them to be able to do that. So I, I do. Absolutely. A, a great Pam, Pam has a theory about houses. Everybody's got to have a house to live in. Yeah. Absolutely. Everybody. Not everybody's got to own land. Yeah. So, and, and the thing is with our business with Pam, this, this is her thing. I mean, you'll notice most of our agents are women. So, we we take pride. Pam is a great leader. Is is I mean she pushes this whole deal. And and Mossy Oak is is I mean they're very fortunate to have her is pushing okay. pushing their brand. We got to run that back again, yeah. right? Because again, let's go back to the beginning of the story, right? Postmaster, right? And then farmer. So you know, and not just you know dipping your toes in. Eight years in, right? Farming, all elements of it getting your hands dirty with the trapping, you know, uh, and then building furniture. I mean, you've got a, just a, a, a mindset for entrepreneurship and she not- owned an eight house poultry farm too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The list literally goes on and on. I said 32, there's probably more than 32 jobs and now successful, uh, agent, you know, and, and broker and, and look what you guys are doing out there. I mean, it's unbelievable. You change the market, you change the company's entire business plan, right? Talk about that. Their business plan was we sell land. We only want land people. And now all of a sudden they're selling real estate and making a killing out of it. That's you. But I also got to give Arlen some props here. One thing a lot of people don't realize the farmers are the original businessmen, you know, uh, and, and that's where your mindset comes in and really, you know, help Pam seal some of those deals. Hey, you got to call him. Nope. You got to call him again. Nope. He's going to sell it to somebody else. Let me tell you something. I've, I've spent time with, with growing up with farmers and watching it's all negotiation all the time. Mm-hmm. You guys know how to get what you want. And a lot of it is just, it's, it's knowing the silent approach when to talk, when not to talk, when to get aggressive and when to back off. And, you know, that's where you helped Pam in the beginning. And now she just took it and run with it. So, man, k- kudos to both of you guys. You, this Seriously, you guys are an inspiration. There's going to be people that listen to this podcast and go, I had no idea that this is how that agency got so big. And uh, man, seriously, you guys should be very proud of your accomplishments. And it's not just about the money that you're making. It's all the people you're helping. You know, you've got a lot of families out there that you've helped lead to homes and you're giving them all the amenities that they want. Right. Arlen's out there digging ditches and building. You name it, man, it's happening. But but that's what I want to say. That's what I want to say is to me, when when I first started getting someone in their first home, because guys, y'all, y'all got a lot of my loans. Yeah. Y'all know that. I mean, you've got my home. Yeah. You've got my daughter's home. I mean, Click and Close has my loans. So, right. but um, getting someone in their first home that does not know that they can get that—that that is where that is where I started. Yeah. So when I have someone that walks in, I mean, I want to tell one story. This little girl still lives in Cave City. She still lives here. She works at Pico, which is our which is our poultry plant down here. Yep. I've never met her really before. She may have came in my flea market, may have known her from there. Um, she kind of knew me, which, you know, people, I'm not originally from here. So, um, and I don't go eat out and stuff. I, I don't even have time to eat during the day. So I don't leave. I believe that. I mean, you see me, you see me in my truck. You just see me passing. I promise you, you don't see me sitting in the restaurant eating. You don't see me out socializing. I don't do that. Uh, We don't do that. Um, You will see us at Colton's every once in a while on a Friday night, but that's it. (laughs) We don't socialize. Um, So, but she walks in my office and she's got a loan with you. So she's got her loan with you. And I just seen her in the bank the other day. So she's got her loan with you. <laughs> but um, she she walked in my office and she said, hey, uh, she said, I need to talk to someone about possibly looking at some houses. And I said, okay. 
Uh, I said, well, come on back. And it was her and her husband, and they had been working all day. They were, you know, they were, they'd been working. Um, I'm in jeans and a t-shirt pretty much every day or in a, in just a, you know, I'm just, I'm just plain. She comes in and she had been working. She, um, had, you know, just jeans and a t-shirt on. You could tell she'd been working. And, um, I said, come on in. I said, let's go to my office. We sit down and she said, well, I haven't really got pre-approved yet. So I went down to a neighboring office and they would not talk to me. She said, because I hadn't gotten pre-approved. And I was like, really? She said, yeah. And she said, I don't really know what to do. She said, but I know that you've helped a lot of people around here in our area. And she said, I don't even know what I'm pre-approved for, but I know there's a house that I wanted to see. And I asked them if I could go see it. And they said, no, uh, you need to get pre-approved first. And we don't take people out until they get pre-approved. And she was like, okay, so what do I do? And they were like, go to the bank, get pre-approved, come, come back. So she's like, she walked in my office and of course I called um, a company and I said, hey, can you get this girl pre-approved? And he said, yes, I can do it right now. And uh, got them pre-approved through you guys. And I said, great. And she put the offer in on the house that she was gonna go look at with this other company. She got the house and still lives in the house. Still is paying for the house, but I just seen her the other day in town. And so that, is, and she never, she was like, oh my gosh, I never thought I could get that house. Yeah. So that is what we, that's what I love doing. He loves the passion of the land yeah. and I love the land too. Yeah. I, but, but my passion is because I still see that girl in the grocery store. And I promise you when I see her, she's got tears in her eyes because she never thought she could do that. You did that. And in doing that with the with y'all and the houses, I mean like with us, first first time farmers, Pam works with first time farmers daily. I mean, getting them through that and and what I guess makes us I mean, we sit down with people and go through these applications with FSA them. applications. FSA, I mean are it takes five terrible. hours to go yeah. through an FSA application. They're, they're terrible. But we do it because that's how I got started. I was a first-time farmer. And I was a first-time farmer. And Pam was a first-time farmer. When she come out on the farm, she rented her own ground and was a first-time farmer. So we know the first-timers on all this, and it's it's nice to be able to to not degrade someone for being that first-time person and for them to know that I've been in their shoes, and that makes me feel good because when they say, you know what, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, I'm like, hey, I've been there. And we rent I mean, our farms out to first-time farmers because yeah. we were that farmer, and they're hungry. Yeah, I mean, my gosh, they'll work night and day on that farm. I, yeah, so I walk this but back that's real quick. You know, you guys. So what you just said is, you know, not only do we help people find homes and help people find land and help people develop land. Heck, we'll build the furniture for the house, uh, and we'll trap some animals to get them off your property. But what you just said, and I think this is the most powerful thing, is it doesn't matter who you are and what walk of of life you came from and what you're trying to accomplish. Whether you want to buy a house and you don't think you can, you need to call Pam and Arlen, and they're going to help you do it. And they're going to give you the right tools to make it happen and to step it through all the way to completion so you can have tears in your eyes when you run into them at the grocery store. And simultaneously, if you want to be a first-time farmer, and again – we're talking about paperwork that runs deep, right? But you know that's where your your calling is, and you want to do it. Pam and Arlen are going to take the time to walk you through that paperwork. And it's not just about getting you the land to, to farm on. They're gonna they're gonna take you from the beginning to the end and make this dream come true for you. This is what it's all about, right here, right? This is what it's all about is making homeowners homeowners, and and helping farmers do what their their passion is, their calling. You know, you may have some somebody who's farmed somebody else's land and says, I want to do it myself, but I don't know how to get started. I'll bet you those are some of your clients that you turn into successful farmers. Yeah. Absolutely. Having their own successes in an industry and working for themselves. Yeah, it is. It is. And, that, and of course, here, uh, right here. yeah, no, no wonder y'all are so successful. Uh, but let's talk about this uh, today in your agency. How, how many How many agents do you have? 
Oh, wow. Uh, 13, I think. So 13 18. and growing. Yeah. 13. Um, and, and I know, because I, I look at your production report, you're still a producing broker, Pam. Uh, at what point are you going to stop selling at that? Because at a certain point. <laughs> that ain't Never. She I'll be was doing it, that's why I asked. <laughs> she was selling furniture in her grandfather's furniture store when she was six years old. <laughs> She I'll be selling, selling when I'm 80. Your tractor while she was, <laughs> yeah. while she was hey, working the road. Hey, let me tell you, we had this huge shop. Can you imagine the guys that work with you? Oh, yeah. And you got everything parked outside, and it's raining, and, and we're putting bearings in this, and they're like, why are we doing this? And be like, Pam's building furniture inside. <laughs> we got to work on the desk outside. <laughs> Blasphemy. It's blasphemy. Uh, I, I, at a certain point, there's only, two, last time I checked, there's only 24 hours in a day. Uh, and all this. Sleep, oh, oh, yeah. I, I forgot about that. Hey, listen, that's the thing. I get here at six every morning, yeah. yep. six o'clock in the morning. My, my door is open and I actually have a phone calls coming in and I actually have clients walking in my door. As they know. 615. Yeah. yeah that, that are, that know I'm here. So, and I leave here sometimes around 7, 7.30 at night. Yeah. So, But one thing for sure, and for sure on this is Mossy Oak has taken a great attention to Pam and what she's able to do. Yeah. And they give her all kinds of resources now to help. So, I mean, it's great. They should. You know, they, they know they've got a prize there. And at the end of the day, you know, they want to make sure that you can continue to do the great things that you're doing because it's, it, it's not just helping the company, but it's helping the people, you know, you guys are changing lives out there. And I said it before, I'm going to say it again. You're the real American heroes. You know, this is the stuff when people don't, they don't always think about, you know, a, as somebody that's selling homes and selling land as heroes, but you're making people, you know, successful and you're giving them long-term wealth, generational wealth. You're changing history for people. And there's, there's something very heroic about that because you don't have to take the time to walk them through all that FSA paperwork. That, that That's not a requirement. You know, you're doing no. it because you, you want to provide a service to people because you were a successful farming couple, you know, and if that's their passion and that's their calling, you guys are making it happen. I mean, you're, you're, you're making dreams come true out there. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. yeah. That, that, we, we, we love it. Hi. You're working so at, Pam. Hang on, hang on. Go huh? Ahead. Go ahead, Arlen. So Pam also is uh owns whispering pine ranch and tree farm too oh, she planted that's, that's i'm gonna tell you she sat on a planter and planted a million pine trees wow. in a planter that's awesome <laughs> again 24 hours in a day what yeah. the heck by the way i want i think i want to talk to your kids you're sitting in a bar here they're i'm sure they're looking at you right now and going number one thank you for not making me farm <laughs> exactly exactly uh, uh, yes do. that is one reason we're not farming yeah yes. they don't want i'm to sure farm. they're very yeah. happy they don't have to be farmers and yeah. and, and number two yeah. it has to be our labor of love you know you, no one gets up and do the amount of work that you do unless you really love what you do um because yeah. you don't have to do this <laughs> but neither one of you have well, to. Let's, let's touch on that real quick because yeah. we're about to wrap up we've we, we've got we've hit that mark but i, I do want to hear yeah. this what is it? Uh, what is it that, that, that there's got to be a calling for you? You know, I know there's a calling for me in, into why I do what I do. What is it that, that makes you have that kind of drive? What, do you, what are you trying to accomplish and why? Like, where does that come from? Are you asking me? I'm asking both of you. Yeah. So why don't you go yeah. first, Pam? I don't know. I just, when, when I get up in the mornings, I mean, man, as soon as I wake up, I am ready to go. We both, ever since we've been together, I mean, we're ready to go with real estate or with anything we've done together. Yeah. It has been different. It's just been weird because we're both very driven. Yeah. And so if I dream it, he makes it come true. If he dreams it, I make it come true. So that is the difference. I mean, we don't even have to ask each other. All we have to do is mention it. And the next thing we know, it's coming. I mean, we're making it come true because I feel like if he's thinking about it, he's wanting it to happen. And if he believes in it, we need it to happen. Yeah. And he, the vice versa. So, so we don't, we don't have any questions about what somebody wants or, you know, 
like when we talked about building this building here, I mean, how many square feet is this? Oh, 16,000. We got 16,000 square feet new new office building here. But we we've built got three offices this year. Yeah, we've built three offices, but we've got offices upstairs for our clients because when we've got Apartment. clients apartments, when we've got when we've got clients that are going to come in here from California, Chicago, from New York, from South Carolina, from Florida, and they call me up and they say, hey, Pam, I want to work exclusively with you. We've got friends or family that's coming in from out of, out of town. I've heard you are the best in your area. If they're coming in, I've got them a room upstairs, guys. They've got a room. They've got a shower. They've got a full kitchen back here. True. And I'm going to be able to, to be right here with them. They're going to be able to wait. I mean, it's a nice room. They're going to be able to wake up, get up in the vehicle with me. I'm going to be able to take them and show them everything. I mean, I'm going to set them up here. I want them to know what they're getting into when they come to Arkansas. So, but when I get up in the mornings, man, I am just, I'm ready to go. So I get up, I'm ready to go. I get here. I look at all my folders, um, helping people, knowing that today was the day that I'm going to put some like, like today, I listed a place that is not a great listing. Like I texted you earlier and I said, yes, I'm ready for this today. But <laughs> I was getting my listing in because the sun was shining. Yeah. It's a divorce. It's not something I like doing. But it is a divorce. It's a piece of property we're having to list. And I try to try to handle this with kit gloves. But it's something that they trusted me to do and do it very carefully. So I'm doing it the best I can and the quickest I can because I could have waited till Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week like most realtors would have. Honestly, they would have because they action. most of our realtors are all, are all gone. They're all headed to the lake this weekend. Yeah, it's a, the, the long weekend, uh, yeah. <laughs> it is a long weekend, but not, not for us. So I went there and I took my pictures because I want it on there this weekend so that we can try to get it sold quickly. Yeah. And when I was out there, she texted me and she said, I so appreciate you guys coming out and doing this today because I just listed it yesterday. Yeah. She's, and we did drone footage. We've already done drone footage, professional photos. I've done the floor plan. I've done it all today. Yep. And we've got two showings today Boom. already. Boom. So that's what my drive is. Is I mean, and, and I'll still be going. We've got well, showings till 830 tonight, guys. And, so, and one thing is, like, when Pam come out on the farm, you know, like, she'd be like, why do you get up every day before daylight? And I'm like, if you're not up at daylight and started, you're, well, behind. you're behind the whole day. So we still do the same thing. We get up every morning before the alarm goes off at 445. I don't care if I it's Christmas ask, morning or through. what. Yep. Yeah. And... And we're out because we sit there for the last 20 minutes before she gets in her truck and I get in mine and we kind of coordinate because, I mean, we sell the entire state of and Arkansas. And we go separate ways. Yeah. We, it's not like me and him go together. We go uh -huh. together on weekends. Yeah. If we're going to show. If, if we're going to show. Arkansas is a pretty good sized state. I mean, you may be. I mean. I may be in Eudora, Lake yeah. Village, <laughs> which is five hours. I mean, seriously. Yeah. That might be like Blyville. I just got a phone call from Blyville right before I got on here. I'm going to list this old skating rink in Blyville. I mean, seriously. So, and I just listed a lodge in Manila, which is two and a half hours from here. So. Lodge in a what? A lodge in Manila. <laughs> yeah. So, so back to the Mossy Oak and Will wanting me to be their agent and land guy. Yeah. So when we go to Mossy Oak, they hardly even know my name, just so you know. That. <laughs> they know who you are. They know who you are. But Arlen, yeah. you said it best. Pam, you're the market. You know, you are the market. You know, yeah. you're you're a visionary, you, you know, and you you take action. And that's where a lot of people fail. They have a vision and they don't take action on it. You take action every minute of every day. You know, this thing that you've built, this building with these apartments and, you know, places for your clients to stay. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. That's that's unheard of. And you've done it. That's him. Yeah. Well, that's I, that, that's I, I had the vision. Yeah. 
I had the vision. Yeah. And then, and I, and I came by and he's literally out here with a track hoe and he's breaking it down. And I said, what are we doing? He said, we're building it, baby. We're tearing the dirt up. People, uh, we we build build our buildings. We build our buildings and people are like, who is your architect? And I'm like, we drew it on paper paper and we start building. Yeah. So you're looking at them. Well, guys, we can't keep you here all day, but I want to, I wanted to extract one more thing. So let's go back. And I don't know how many years ago it was, cause I don't remember what you said, but, uh, uh, I remember what you said, but I remember the, the date. Um, we go back and you're a postmaster and you're a farmer and you walk into that building and you guys locked eyes. What was that? What was that moment like? We still have the dinger that I down. I hit that dinger and she came around the corner. We still have it. <laughs> listen, listen, I was only a fill in yeah. at the post office. So this lady that was in there, he used to come in and he would just ding, 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 she ding. She hated me. And, and so the day, so we're in this. <laughs> I would just ding that thing so, just to I'm make her mad. So we're, we're in this little bitty post office and I'm just an OIC, which is just officer in charge for the day. I wasn't there permanent. And he comes in and he's just like, ding, 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 ding. And I'm like, I'm on the phone with a, with Little Rock. Yeah. And I'm thinking, and then he just keeps on. <laughs> and I finally, I laid my phone down and I come around that corner. I said, can I help you? And he said, he had his glasses on and he puts his glasses right here. And he says, I am so sorry. I thought you were someone else. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not. And I told him, I said, well, I'm not. And I'm on the phone. And he was like, yes, ma'am. And he just sat there for a long time. And we literally, we we talked and knew each other for about a year and a half. About a year and a half. And then then we got together. So we were. But we, we still have the dinger. But we kept, but I kept the dinger. <laughs> the little bell. I love it. Best decision you guys ever made. You yep. know, because here it you was. are today. Making dreams come true. You guys are truly happy. I see it all over both of your faces. It's hey, a beautiful thing. When she got to the farm, though, she didn't just go to the farm. She drives combine, tractors, trailer trucks, backhoes, track hoes. And he, like, I, that's why I didn't want to bring him on here because of this. You said eight he years of farming. Did. I got the point. She wasn't just out there dipping her toes in. I see the yeah. way that she works. She's doing it all. Yeah. All or nothing, yeah. baby. All or nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, no yeah. wonder y'all are so successful. Yeah. You relate to every single person out yeah, there in Arkansas. I'm sure there's not a person out there you, you can't, you don't have some common bond with, probably. Yeah. Well, by the way, That's you're, right. you're the reason we do the podcast. Yeah, this was you fun. Know? Yeah. Like, seriously, we meet yeah. great people like yourself, innovators. And uh, yeah. man, it's just, it's an absolute pleasure to hear your story because this is a good one. Like, yeah. it's a really good one. I mean, we shoot two to three oh. of these a day. And you guys, you thanks guys for having us. <laughs> <laughs> when the folks out there want to find you guys, they probably already know how. They know how, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, yeah. we, we know you represent the entire state of Arkansas. We know you do yes. anything from land loans to, you know, million dollar homes. Um, right. How do they find you guys? What, what what's how do, they, how do they get in front of Pamela and Ar- Ar- Arlen? Mossy Oak Properties, Selling Arkansas. You can find us at WeSellArkansas.com or you can call me on my cell at 870-897-0700. Yeah, guys. So, and and you can find them easy. We, you know, obviously we scout out people, but with them, it was really easy to find. It's like you should, you search Arkansas and there's this giant spotlight and it lands right on them. (laughs) So, uh, you know, if you're looking for somebody to represent you, if you listen to this podcast, there's no question in your mind uh, why the experience is going to be the best you're going to get in Arkansas. And the, the the title says it all. We sell Arkansas. We don't just sell some of Arkansas. We sell the whole state. So, wow, this is a great one, guys. Uh, well, we're going to put that across the bottom of the screen. So when you're watching this, just look at that. It probably already came across. Make sure you reach out to these guys. If you're trying to buy in Arkansas, you're going to get a great experience and Arlen's going to build the property for you. So at the end of the day, if there's anything you need on that thing, he either does it himself or has a resource for it. So, so, so you're in great, very, very capable hands here, guys. Uh, Dave, what do you got? We've actually, Go ahead. we've actually developed 126 properties yeah. from start to finish. Yeah. Well, that's 126 and I know a whole lot more to come. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. And a lot more. Thanks, guys. Sold. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, here's the deal, guys. If you're looking for property in Arkansas from land to a $50,000 house to a million dollar house, call the Welches or someone from their brokerage. They're going to help you out. I, I think after Thanks. this, though, there's some people that may just come in just to sit and ride with you just so they can listen I to all the stories. I mean, all these, yeah. all these stories that you tell are amazing. I mean, golly. Uh, but yeah, call, call these guys. They're the best in Arkansas. All right. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you all for taking time. We know you're busy, so 45 minutes this is one of the longest yeah. ones we've done, but I'm glad we did because we literally covered a lot of territories. So, <laughs> we ain't even. Success part. Oh, darling, I'm going to go, go ahead, brother. We ain't even going to tell you the story about me almost dying from a snake bite. Oh, we're, no, we're, not, <laughs> we're getting part, part two. Part two. We're part definitely two. doing a part two. <laughs> part yeah. two. All right, guys, we're going to close this one out. So we're your real estate success partners. I'm Devin Abu. I'm David Wynn. And if you want to check us out, come on over to realestatesuccesspartner.com. Again, that's realestatesuccesspartner.com. Also, come check out the video. If you want to meet Pamela and Arlen face-to-face, these guys are just absolutely fantastic. And uh, you can find that over on YouTube at the Dubuque team. Uh, or you can check us out on IG or Facebook also at the Dubuque team. Hey, make sure you subscribe so we can bring this content every single week. Also, if you can leave some comments down below. And uh, hey, if you want to be on the show, let us know. We'd love to bring you in. But until the next time, hey, we'll see you then. See you guys.